Today was a sad day. Ding dong YouTube, welcome back to the channel. I'm the Jobless Coder and today is my day 16 update of the situation here in Lake Louise following the fire, which took place on the 3rd. Um, if you've been following these updates, you are very well familiar with the situation at hand. Uh, the building caught fire after one of the staff members lit it on fire. And now is the point where you are realizing that he has destroyed more than material belongings. I found out today, going into work um, on the bus from one of my colleagues, that my manager had quit and today was his last day of work. And this guy, man, anyone who is employed at the Lake Louise Ski Resort knows exactly who I am talking about because he doesn't even need an introduction. He's one of the most unique people I think I've ever met. And a lot of people have the same reaction when they first meet him. I can't believe he's a manager, but he is. And I've seen him be very professional in the kitchen. He's also a complete goofball and the class clown type of person, um, if you will. He is so fucking funny. I have spent the last month since moving here laughing my ass off to the point where I was crying some days, just how funny he is. And he keeps the kitchen lively and upbeat. I don't think I could have made it through that day of the fire continuing to work if it wasn't for him and his humorous remarks about getting deported now his passport is burned and that was just funny as shit uh, that day and all his hilarious comments and quick wittiness about him it kept the kitchen lively when it was the worst day of all of our lives and we are from well aware that while we're working all of our shit is burning and our rooms are gone and all of our possessions and documents and everything is being burned while we work and he kept the kitchen lively um when i first met him was my first day here i was getting a tour of the unit and my room where i was going to be staying and he came back with my roommate it must have been right around the time the bus brought them back after their shift and they came into the room together being goofballs the two of them, I'm pretty sure I think I remember they were tickling each other or something like that. And he asked me what it was that I did, or that, what my job was. And I said, oh, I'm, I'm the new dishwasher. I start in two days. And he immediately lights up and says, oh, he's the new dishy. And that's what he called me. He called me the new dishy. And so to see him go now after only having had the opportunity to work with him for a month basically is just so depressing because it could have been longer I could have had more time to, to work with him I could have had more time to, to hang out and be friends with him um, he has always been helpful at least in in the time that I've known him here in this short period of time uh, you know when the guys found the spider-man bathrobe for me because they knew that I like spider-man I had this really cool spider-man outfit that burned um, He held it at his room in the Fairmont and I came and picked it up for him He went into I think it was either Cochrane Maybe he went to Calgary over the weekend during my birthday and he picked up this awesome spider-man shirt for me that I had got as a birthday present from him. And then that night he gave me a twisted tea and all of the guys had me chug it uh, right there all at once. Um, so he's just really chill and cool to hang out with. He's unlike any manager I've ever worked with. And some days he'd be throwing grains of rice at me in the kitchen, or I'd hear him from across the room making velociraptor sounds. Other days he would be barking like a dog. It was just the funniest, weirdest, wildest shit. And it kept the job fun and exciting because dishwashing is not particularly, you know, mentally engaging, let's say. You just stand there and repeat these mundane tasks of running the same dishes through the machine three times a day. Um, so to have him in the kitchen 
brought atmosphere and mood and liveliness to it. Now, he is still going to be in Lake Louise. He's got another job elsewhere. But the biggest thing was the living arrangements. He got put up in the RV park. And I knew, I knew right away this is exactly what was going to happen, that the um, trailer park boys, as they put it, would be cool for a week. And then by the end of the second week, everyone would be like, Fuck this, I want a real shower, I want a bathroom that's more than two feet by two feet wide. I don't want to have to share with four other people. And so I'm glad that I'm in Sunshine Village and I don't have to deal with that. But I can see a lot of people over the next couple weeks, if they don't get out of the RVs, they're probably going to lose their mind. Um, and... I don't know at what point he made the decision to quit. Maybe it was the day after he decided that he was going to go and get a job elsewhere. This is the first I've heard about it. A lot of the information I get, I'm like the last person to hear about it. I'm kind of out of the loop here. Um, I'm not in the Snapchat groups or anything like that. Or I only just joined the Facebook group for the uh, victims of the fire and, and hearing about a movie night on Friday. So, you know, maybe he'll come out to the movie night and I'll see him there. I'll probably see him at parties and events and whatnot. But it was really sad to just know that this was his last day of work. And he seemed kind of somber and broken up about it. You know, I think he wanted to stay, but given the current living arrangements, I don't blame anyone if they want to leave because me here in Sunshine Village, I'm not particularly thrilled that I'm only working four days on and three days off. And of the days I work on, they're not even full eight hour shifts. So now I'm working 24 hours a week and it's okay because I'm not paying rent or food right now but if at some point they're like oh you should start paying rent and food I'm just gonna have to say look I need a, either a raise or more hours of work because the budget that I have right now it's it's not gonna fly if you start adding the cost of rent and food back on when I'm only working part-time not even I think part-time is 25 hours a week and I'm working 24 hours a week so it's not ideal, obviously, the situation um, as it stands. Um, I think I am working 25 hours a week because there's 15 minutes on each of the four days that'll, I just needed to bring that up. That will bring that extra hour up to 25. So given the circumstances, it sucks seeing people go and some people have already quit and left and, and moved on. And you know, I knew that people were gonna be leaving as it was at the end of the season because they wanna go back home, they're from Australia, the UK, they're gonna travel or they're gonna go and do something else. And even in the time that I stayed in my unit, we had two people that were there when I moved in that had moved out in the duration that I was there for the three weeks before the fire. But this disconnect really with everyone being split up and in separate places chucktown was this big family and a big party town and we all hang out together and now it just kind of feels like everything's fallen apart and so this is what i say this timothy peterson has caused more than just the destruction and loss of material goods he's now disconnected the family in such a way that certain people are going to leave and move on and do other things with their lives and that's totally fine that's their life to go and live but you know i'm i'm gonna miss this guy he's so freaking cool and hilarious and so you know um and I, i'm sure i'm see i'll see him around he is really close with my my roommate i, I guess now former roommate um, the, the two of them would joke about being married and so we even had the, the new girl that moved into our unit um, when she saw my manager my my roommate introduced him as the husband of the other roommate and she legit believed it for like a good three minutes it was a good laugh he always says no I'm not homosexual I'm homosexual which I thought was hilarious um, but yeah that was basically what happened today is that it was the last day working with this guy and so the kitchen's just not going to be the same without him and i mean for me i've already expressed my interest in eventually getting a job in the it department at which point i wouldn't be working in food and beverage anymore but this 
this 16 week contract four months during the summer you know to only get a month of like really good stuff out of it and now everything's kind of just mediocre it it sucks now they're trying to bring everyone back together to do things this is what the movie night on friday is all about is to get us back to this cohesive state of coexistence together where we can feel that we can partake in in what's going on i mean I, I, as I understand, they're still doing party nights every Sunday in Lake Louise, but number one, you need a vehicle to get down there because the buses stop running at eight unless you want to walk three kilometers down to the village and then three kilometers back to the ski resort, and then you need a place to crash for the night. And yes, I have a sleeping bag. Um, I don't want to be that guy that just shows up every weekend in the campground and crashes at somebody's place. I mean, I probably could get away with it, but you know, it's not ideal, um, and it's it's... It's, it's, it would just be me too, you know, it's not everyone that's down here in Sunshine Village or I think there's even people in Canmore still and so I can only imagine how uh, disconnected everyone feels. Um, you know, there are events taking place here in Sunshine. There's a bingo night tomorrow night that I want to go to. So, you know, we can, you know, make new friends and bond with the employees at Sunshine Village. But um, I'm part of the Lake Louise staff and I don't really feel like I'm a part of it being here and everything so unfortunately that is the reality for the foreseeable future until something more substantive comes in i know this week they're setting up the the big trailers not the rv trailers but the, the ones the oil, oil field guys use and the first one is going to house 49 beds and then the next one's going to house 49 beds so there you go there's what's that 98 beds but there's still, that's like half of the people that have been affected that are still either going to be in RVs or here at Sunshine Village or in Canmore or somewhere else that's not there at Lake Louise. And so for the time being, we're just going to play this by ear and see how it goes day to day. Um, uh, my, my manager, he still has my certificate for the personal trainer that was laminated. I found out where he's keeping it in his RV. So he's moving out, as I understand, tomorrow and starting the position on the weekend. His first day of work, I think he said, was Saturday at, at his new job. Um, so at some point over the next couple days, because I'm only working for Wednesday and then Thursday, and then I get Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, I'm going to have to go and make a stop, a pit stop on my way out to the trailer to get this personal trainer certificate. But it's just, you know, nice having that um, uh, level of, I guess, trust with your manager that he can just take your stuff and just keep it in, in his RV or his hotel room or whatever and just be like, hey man, come by and get it anytime you're around. Um, but now that will not be anymore. So that's basically what I have for today's update in terms of everything going on. It was very busy today. We had about 300 people in the buffet and the lodge was packed. So we're definitely getting back to the, um, the, the ski resort's reputation here as being a world-renowned facility where tons and tons of people come. I was working in the Ten Peaks Lodge and I was listening to the numbers being called out and I think they got over 500 um, orders for that day. So that would be, you know, the people working coming to get their lunch as well as you know a family of five shows up and they, they place an order and that's one of the 500 orders that they got so there was a lot of food moving through the kitchen today um and we have meal vouchers and everything like that over the next little bit as well and i was being asked questions from my other managers about how the food is set up here in sunshine village because they're going to have to set up something similar for these new trailers when they come in and i mentioned that we get ice cream here every night and i was told that that's going to be a hard, hard order to compete against so I'm glad to be getting ice cream every night. Uh, that's not something that I've gotten as a perk, let's say, since the time I worked as an ice cream truck driver in Vancouver. But that is so many lifetimes ago at this point, it feels. It was only five years ago. Uh, no, four. Four years ago. But it feels like an eternity away. 
Um, but thank you for everyone who keeps following these videos and I'll just keep putting out the daily updates until something changes and I feel that it's no longer necessary to do so. Um, and make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends. And I will see you tomorrow in the next update. Bye.